gospel reading for this uh, Saturday afternoon is taken from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, and verse 19 to 28. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our, our Savior. Savior. I'd like to invite us to read this uh, passage together. Ready? One, two, three. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, Who are you? He came right out and said, I'm not the Messiah. Well then, who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we are expecting? No. Then who, who, who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I'm a voice shouting in the wilderness. Clear the way for the Lord's coming. Then the Pharisees who had been sent asked him, If you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? John told them, I baptize with water. But right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize. Though his ministry follows mine, I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, it is always a joyous thing to uh, see someone declaring and witnessing and testifying of your goodness. And today, Lord, in this passage, we are encouraged in such a way by the life of John the Baptist. And Lord, we pray that as we come to encounter him and his doing and his testimony, may we also be like him, to be a mouthpiece of yours, to be a voice, Lord, in the wilderness where people uh, need help, when people are confused, they hear the direction. When they are fearful, they know where the help comes from. And so, Lord, we pray that your words will take root in our hearts this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, as I look around, I can see that uh, quite a number of us are still on holidays, which is a good thing. I, I know that you're spending time with your family. I, I heard that some went to Taipei, uh, some went to Korea, uh, some Japan and somewhere else. Some just came back from Malacca, all right? <laughs> yeah, so welcome back, those who are back, and for those who are away, we just pray for them that they will be blessed uh, with their time together and also journey mercies. But tomorrow will be the third Sunday of Advent, right? And we have come to the third sermon in the sermon series uh, for this season of Advent and Christmas. And I've entitled today's sermon, Be Ready for Surprises. Okay? Uh, indeed, in this season of Advent, I was pleasantly surprised by a few things that I noticed in the family camp that took place from the 3rd uh, to 6th of December, just not too long ago. And two of which uh, I would like to present to you in the form of a video. Uh, the first video... Uh, that you're going to see is that I, I was really surprised by the mass participation of what they call the praise dance exercise led by one of our sisters from the Chinese congregation. And here is a video for you to uh, get a few of that mass participation.
Okay. Oh, isn't it wonderful to have so many people dancing at the same time, both from the English and Chinese congregation? But the second thing that I was surprised by was the mass participation of the games, uh, both uh, by the members from the English and Chinese congregation, and the games were led by our young people. And here's a very short video clip for you to catch a glimpse of what happened. You see some uh, breaking of rules over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you recognize uh, who the person is. Okay, so if you want to watch more of the video, uh, come look for me. I've got a few more. Yeah, so these are some of the surprises that I, I got uh, when I was in the family camp. It was really wonderful to see brothers and sisters, both from the Chinese and the English congregation, coming together, not just eating and then learning together, but also having uh, fun and exercising at the same time as well. So I'm really grateful uh, to God for such a wonderful time. It was uh, four and a half years ago you know, that we went for our last family camp, and this was really uh, wonderful. So be ready for surprises in the season of Advent and Christmas. And in fact, today's passage in uh, John chapter 1, verse 6 to 8 and verse 19 to 28 highlighted two things we should be surprised by. Okay? So the first thing is this, be surprised by the power of your voice. All right? okay? The second thing is be surprised that others do not recognize uh, Jesus. So let's take a look at the first one, which is be surprised by the power of your voice. Now, here's the background to what was happening uh, to help us understand what was said in John chapter 1. You see, John the Baptist was actually gaining a huge following with his preaching and teaching. So we find in Matthew 3, uh, this record of what happened. John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was this, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. People from Jerusalem and from all Judea and all over Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. So not only did John had a huge following, the people who were city dwellers, all right, living in urban areas, took the effort to go out into the wilderness, actually to see and to hear him. So you see, for us, it is like going to Tanjong Irau to hear someone. Do you know where is Tanjong Irau? Have you heard? Is it, do you think it's in Singapore? Tanjong Irau. I-R-A-U. Indonesia. No, it's in Singapore. <laughs> It's a ulu ulu place, okay? Tanjong Ira. So it's like us, you know, living in Tanjong Baga, going to Tanjong Ira to hear someone speak. So this is what was happening. The city dwellers went out to the wilderness to hear what John exactly uh, was saying. And so because of John's ability to pull a crowd to some ulu place to hear him, the Jewish leaders decided to send priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John this question, who are you, right? Who are you? Verse 19. But actually, they were not really interested to find out who John is, right? They were simply trying to question John where he got his authority to preach and to baptize. That was what they were going after, right? As uh, John himself made some pretty bold statements, he said, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So these are uh, bold statements that John the Baptist is making. You see, in the mind of the Jewish leaders, if there are any religious teaching that the people should receive, it should be from the official source, which is themselves, right? They are the religious leaders, right? Say, and not from a nobody like John the Baptist. That is what they are thinking. So in the minds of the Jewish leaders is this phrase, you know, which we are very familiar with, don't anyhow. <laughs> are you familiar with this phrase? Don't anyhow. Don't anyhow say. Don't anyhow do. For us, uh, parents will tell us, don't anyhow eat. <laughs> right? So don't anyhow. 
That was what exactly they were trying to confront John the Baptist with. And so they asked John a few questions, right? Who are you? And John said, I'm not the Messiah. And then they went on to ask, well then, who are you? Are you Elijah? And he said, no. Are you the prophet we are expecting? And again, John said, no. Okay. Now, why did the people ask John if he was the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? Now, let's find out more about who these people are, and that's why they ask these questions. So what about the Messiah? You see, throughout the late Old Testament period, and especially in the period between the Old Testament and New Testament, the hope for a coming Messiah was widespread. They were expecting a Messiah to come. Now, in the days of Greek and Roman oppression, a period over 300 years, the people were hoping for someone to, who is filled with God's power and spirit, like Moses, who would work some saving miracles on, the, on behalf of God's people. Now, why were they expecting that? Well, the reason was this, the oppression was really strong. So in AD 54 to AD 68, the Roman Emperor Nero, right, after a fire burned down massive sections of Rome, what happens was that Nero needed someone to take the blame for. And so he pointed his fingers at the Christians. And what happens was this, he would dip Christians in oil. All right. So imagine, you, it's not spa, you know. Dip them in oil. And then after that, lit them up for his garden party. Right? To be life torches, human torches. That was what was happening at, during that period. And then later on in AD 249 to AD 251, again another Roman emperor by the name of Decius. He was one of the most vicious persecutors of, of Christianity. He was, it was so intense that his persecution of Christians was this, that he would capture them, he would torture them, and he would force them to renounce their faith. All right? So systematic. And so no wonder people were looking out for a Messiah. No wonder people were hoping that someone would come and save them, isn't it? And so they asked, are you the Messiah? And John straight away said, no, I'm not. All right? What about Elijah? So, Okay, John the Baptist, if you are not the Messiah, then perhaps you are the Old Testament prophet, Elijah, who would come before the arrival of the Messiah, as it was written in the Old Testament book, Malachi. It says this, Look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. Okay? So you see, Elijah had been taken from the earth without dying. Right? You remember the story? He, he, he didn't die in 2 Kings 2.11. So the Jews speculated that Elijah was mysteriously alive and then would return during end times. So they were asking, are you Elijah? Right? And of course, John the Baptist denies that he is Elijah who was returning right, to earth. However, John was fulfilling the forerunner's role of Elijah as Luke explained. So we find this is what John the Baptist was doing. John will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. So he was playing the role of Elijah in that sense, the forerunner's role right before the Messiah comes. Now, what about the prophet? So they were asking, are you the prophet? The prophet is likely a reference to the Old Testament uh, promise in Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 15 to 19, where a prophet like Moses would return to Israel sometime in the future. And we find this, it says, Moses continued, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites. And you must listen to him. And so this led to enormous Jewish speculation concerning who this prophet would be. And in some cases, it led them to combine the prophet together with the image of the Messiah. But you see, John simply said this very clearly. 
I am a nobody. I'm not the Messiah. I'm not Elijah. I'm not the prophet. I'm a nobody. I'm just a voice shouting in the wilderness. Clear the way for the Lord's coming. I am just a voice shouting in the wilderness. Clear the way for the Lord's coming. And in fact, this quote was taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5. And it goes like this, so that we can understand the context. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will re be revealed, and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. You see, Isaiah 40 verse 3 to 5 is a picture of someone calling out or shouting for an improvement of the road system and a flattening of the hills and the valleys and the straightening of the curves to aid the return of the people from exile. Now, ultimately, it points to the return of the people back to God. And so when John the Baptist said, I am the voice, you get the picture, he's calling people back to God. He was fulfilling what was promised in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5. Okay? So his voice is asking people to prepare for the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. John the Baptist did not elevate himself as having a stature of importance. He didn't do that. He's just a tool in God's hand, pointing to another who is greater than him who is coming. And John the Baptist, actually, he understood he, he is insignificant as compared to Jesus who is coming after him. In fact, in the same chapter in Isaiah chapter 40, so very interesting just now was Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 to 5, and now Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15, it shows the greatness of who God is. It simply says this, All the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. Now, can you imagine that? Do you have pails at home? Have you filled up your pails before? Quite a, number, quite a lot of water, isn't it? Depending on how big your pail is. But still, you know, if you, your pail is full. And the Word of God says that all the nations of the world are like a, a drop in the bucket. Can you imagine that? And that's how great our God is. And so, John the Baptist knows that he is insignificant as compared to who Jesus is, who is coming after him. And he's merely a voice pointing others to Jesus. The voice is insignificant. But yet, John the Baptist, who identifies himself as the voice, has managed to point people to Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? Now, a voice too can do the same thing. Insignificant, but just like John the Baptist, we too can point people to Jesus. Recently, I, I, was, I had this encounter. I was about to enter a lift at level three. And the door opened, and I went in straight away. And suddenly, a man who was, I saw him when I went, went inside there, he was using his phone, frantically using his phone. And then when he saw me come in, he suddenly asked me this question, is this level three? And straight away, after he asked me, he was frantically looking around to see whether this is level three or not. And I, I was surprised because, I mean, this is level three. <laughs> I was lost for words, what to say for a few seconds, you know. And then finally, I thought he needed help. I said, yes, this is level three. And straight away, he dashed out, you know. He didn't look at me. He didn't see me. I was just a... A voice. <laughs> I was just a voice and said, yes, this is level three. I was a voice in the lift, giving this man who was caught up in this world and who has lost his way, who has lost his direction. I'm a nobody. The man did not even look at me. I was a voice who could give him the direction. He was lost. 
He was caught up with what was happening in his life, and he could not see where to turn and where to go. I was just a voice, and he went out trusting that this is level three. Who are you? Are you a king? Are you a powerful person? Are you a person of great influence? Are you a person of great wealth? Perhaps some of you can identify with that kind of person that I mentioned above. A king, a powerful person, a person of great influence, a person with great wealth. But that is not the qualification God is asking of you before you can be His witness. You just need to be a voice. You just need to be a voice. And that is what John the Baptist is telling us. That's what he's proclaiming. I am a voice in the wilderness pointing people to Jesus. You know, in Paul's teaching in 1 Corinthians, he reminded us of this. But we wonder if we can really do it. And Paul reminded us of this thing. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes, or powerful, or wealthy, when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And He chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. So consider this, your voice is unique, all right? Can you say to one another, your voice is unique? <clears throat> and I'm, I'm not just talking about the sound that your voice produces, no? I'm, I'm also talking about the story that you can tell. The story that you can tell of your life. Some of us here have stories to tell, stories of healing, right? Some of you, you have got stories of breaking a bad habit. This is your voice. Your story is your voice. And some of us perhaps have encountered difficulties where a complaint was lodged against us, but the Lord watched over us, right? And it came to nothing. So each of us, we have our own voice and we have our own stories to tell. So let us make use of our voice in this season of event and Christmas. Let someone who is lost, right? And sometimes it just happens, you know. Uh, for me, I was shocked when I entered the lift. It just happened. And I said, yes, this is level three. And perhaps for some of us, it is like that as well. When someone comes to you, your story, your testimony will be an encouragement to those people. Now, let's look at the final and second point, which is be surprised that others do not recognize Jesus. In John chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, this is what happened. John told them, I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize. Though his ministry follows mine, I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. Was Jesus there? Well, according to this passage, it is. I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize. And later on, in the same chapter, John said this, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he, he highlights who Jesus is. In the crowd with John the Baptist, there were many who did not recognize Jesus. You know that? This is what the passage is telling us. Jesus was right there with them, but they could not recognize him. John is saying, look, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not Elijah, I'm not the prophet. But I know of someone who is greater than I in our midst. 
And he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the same chapter, chapter 1, verse 29. John knows who Jesus is. And in fact, we too are in the same position as John. We are a voice, but we know who Jesus is, don't we? Right? We know who Jesus is. And we know, like John, that Jesus is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Being a Christian after some time, we have the tendency to just mix around with other Christians, isn't it? Right? Uh, why do we do that? Well, because we feel more comfortable and we feel more accepted. Nah? So that's why after some time, you begin to think, you know, this is the tendency, you begin to think that many around us also know Jesus. But this is actually furthest from the truth. The only reason why people around us also know Jesus is because we only mix with Jesus. Uh, not mix with Jesus. <laughs> of course we mix with Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but we only mix with Christians. And we think that everyone around us are already Christians. There's no need to do anything else. But this is furthest from the truth. You know, in 16 of June 2021, there was a Straight Times article. It's entitled this. More Singaporeans have no religious affiliation. More Singaporeans have no religious affiliation. And this is according to the population sen census. Now, the article reports this. While Singapore remains religiously diverse, more residents aged 15 years old and over reported having no religious affiliation compared with 10 years ago. Okay. Now, this increase cut across most types of educational qualification, as well as all age groups, and was more prevalent among younger and Chinese residents, according to the latest population census released on uh, Wednesday, which is 16 of June 2021. Now, according to this article, 18.9% of the population identify themselves as Christians, right? 18.9. Now, what John said in John chapter 1, verse 26, still remains true for us in Singapore. There are many around us who do not know Jesus, right? And John said to them, I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd, is someone you do not recognize. There are many who do not recognize Jesus. So the question that I want to ask you, and I'm asking myself today, will you be the voice to them to hear about Jesus? Will you share your stories with them so that they will recognize Jesus? Assuming that the number of Christians is 20%, just now I said 18.9, but we round it up, now. let's say 20%. What it means is this, that you just need to share with four people. Just four. Right? The Lord brings in actually a lot more people to us, uh. <laughs> but four, uh, four enough. Uh. Can I? Uh, four. Okay. You know, at the family camp, I, and I'd like to close with this uh, story, and later on I would like to invite the music team to come forward to lead us in a closing song. But I just want to close with this story. At a family camp, during breakfast, I was at a counter looking around, and finally I landed myself at the porridge counter. I, I took the bowl and I, I scooped porridge out from the container. And just when I was about to walk away, very interesting, people asked me a question. Is this porridge? <laughs> Again, I was lost for words, huh? because sometimes you're just like, what? <laughs> I, I was scooping out porridge onto my bowl, and I did it a few times uh, because the, the, the ladle wasn't very deep, right? A few times, the porridge. And beside uh, the container, it says congee, or not porridge, congee, all right? And I was wondering, what? What else could this be? <laughs> but of course, I, uh, you know, but of course, you, you, you cannot do that because you're wearing a lanyard, right, that says... <laughs> but life is like that. But life is like that. Think about it. Others 
just need to hear from someone who has been through something to be a certain that this is real, that this is true, because they do not know. They just need to hear from someone that this, especially if you've gone through it, this is real. This is porridge. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> true porridge. And the person after that straight away went to take the porridge. You see, you and I can be that someone who can say to others that it is true. There is a God who hears them. There's a God who loves them. right? And there's a God who is a very present help in time of need. And they will listen to you because you have experienced it yourself. Will you be that voice to the crowd who do not know Jesus? I'd like to invite the music team to come forward. This is an old song, but it is a song that I believe that the Lord can use today to help us to speak to Him and talk to Him. And the title of the song is People Need the Lord. May the Lord move your hearts to see His heart as you sing this song. And may the Lord bring to mind people in your family people in your workplaces, people in your neighbourhood who needs Him. Yeah. 
brothers and sisters i wonder what the lord is saying to you even right now you know i don't believe in guilt tripping people because as christians we don't guilt people to do something I believe in being honest with the Lord. I believe in opening up our hearts to tell God exactly how we feel even as we sing this song. If this is a song that is just pleasant to the ears and nothing else, I want to encourage you to say to the Lord, Lord, this is how I feel. but i know that people need you but somehow i feel indifferent but i know people needs you if that is you I, i want to encourage you to have an honest conversation with the lord and say lord this is how i feel can you please help me for some others you you feel really guilty because there are lots of opportunities that were presented before you but yet for various reasons you you didn't share your story and you feel really guilty and you feel really bad and again i want to invite you to be honest with the lord if this is how you feel tell god god i i feel guilty i feel really bad i, I should have done this but lord i i don't want to feel this way i want to learn how to share christ with others i want to be the voice in the wilderness can you please help me For some of us you say yes this is what I want to do in this Christmas and you're all ready to go and if that is that is you I I also want to invite you to open up your heart to the Lord and say Lord I I'm, I'm all ready show me who and give me wisdom Lord to say the right things things that will be meaningful to this person things that will help this person see beyond the trouble that he or she has give me wisdom thank you lord lord we thank you that your word reminds us that you've come to give us life and life to the fullness but the devil is the other way around he comes to steal and kill and destroy and so lord today we come just as we are And we pray Lord that even as we open up our hearts to you fill our hearts afresh with your love by the power of the holy spirit to overflowing fill us Lord afresh with your love so that Lord in the things that we do in the season of advent and christmas Lord in the stories that we share in the season of advent and christmas Lord it will become a blessing to those who hear us Lord we want to be like John the Baptist. We want to declare that I'm a nobody. But I'm a voice. But I'm a voice who is able to point others to you. And this is who I am. This is who we are. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord for hearing our prayers. Thank you Lord for giving us this opportunity whereby we can open up our hearts to you. And as we do so, Lord, we know that you are transforming us from inside out. Thank you Lord. And so Lord for the people who whom you have put in our minds and hearts. It could be our family members, it could be our colleagues and even neighbors. And even our our nieces and, and and nephews. Lord, we we pray that you help us lord to point them to you in this season in this season thank you lord thank you lord so we pray this and we ask this in jesus name amen 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 let us receive the blessing of the lord as we depart from this place